are developing a new generation of entrepreneurs to provide practical tools to teach young people how to build businesses and to create employment for others. In Lagos, the possibilities are endless. Lagos State, in partnership with AGDC, presents Ignite, powered by First Bank and supported by Bank of Industry. Today, we have the special advisor for Lagos State on taxation and revenue. Remember that some of the taxes are localized. There are some that are national. There are many taxes that are related to the state where you live. And this is Lagos. We live in Lagos, and this is a Lagos State project, and we want you to understand, as a Lagos-based young business person, what the issues are, and those things you must know. And that's why Mr. Shodipo is here. We're not letting him out until you milk him, remember? <laughs> you learn everything that we need to know from him. Ignite from dreams to reality. From the great city of Lagos, it's another inspiring episode of Ignite. Practical business advice taking you from dreams to reality. Ignite from dreams to reality. Mr. Shodipo, we will, in fact, let me turn this round. I don't even want him to start by telling you what he wants you to know. I want you to draw it out of him based on what you know that you do not know and you need to clear, or the areas where you've been confused in the past, or some of the things that have kept you away from paying those taxes because you clearly didn't understand, or some of the traps you've fallen into in the past, like fake tax uh, documents being issued to you without you realizing that you're caught in that. So uh, let's start with the audience, all right? Now, as a young startup, chances are you probably, for your location, probably start off with a shop, not necessarily a proper office. And um, as a legal state you know, um, employee, we understand that the local governments are also under legal state, and they also have their own form of levy that they charge. Um, how do we know which ones are accurate and what the actual um, bill is, you know, like radio and television, Trade tax and all those things. Who wants to know which ones are which real? Ones are okay. real. Which ones are which valid? Ones are. Okay. Because there are so many different ones. Yes. Okay. Okay. My question is very related to his, but I'm not asking which ones are real. I know most of them are real, but how do we how do we get profit from what we are doing? If we have to pay a whole lot of um, government taxes, legal state taxes, federal government taxes, so we want to find the right balance to know which exactly. Maybe my starting point is to give an intro into what taxation is all about, essentially. It, it's a charge levied by governments. When I say governments, the three tiers of government that we have in the system on either your income, activity, transaction, or, na or an event, economic event that you have um, embarked upon. And so, if as an individual, you work for somebody, you earn income. The law, the constitution, and the statutes of the country, the law, the constitution, they all agree that you must pay your taxes on that income. And then for the individual, you will pay to the state. If, of course, you live in that state, within that state there is a local government, if the local government provides some services for you in terms of where you live, you also pay what we call tenement rates in court now. I will explain that because something else has come to replace the tenement rate, the land use charge. If you're an entrepreneur 
and you have a limited liability company, a corporate entity, that same person, you will be obliged to pay your taxes to the federal government. If it's a sole proprietor and you are the only individual controlling that organization, you will also be, in addition to your personal income, if your accounts and if you do not separate your personal account from that sole proprietorship, you, that sole proprietorship as an entity will pay taxes to the state government. Why do we pay so many of the taxes when we don't know how to make profit or from the little profit that we make? Interestingly, the evolution of taxes did not take into cognizance how much of profit you will make. What it did is the um, the equity in it. In other words, if one person makes more money, the person would pay much more than you because it is a percentage of what you have made. Now, if you make 1,000 Naira as your profit and the um, corporate tax you need to pay is 35%, is different from whoever has made 100,000 or 1 million Naira as profit. That's the only place where the, the equity of it, where the law has taken care of how much will I be paying if I do this or if I don't do this. And also as an individual, if you are a personal entrepreneur, um, you don't make so much money, the tax band is such that it has taken care of that. For example, if your allowances, consolidated release have taken up all that you could pay in terms of uh, taxes, and then your adjustable income is just below nothing or negative, then you have to now pay minimum of 1%. However, if you go beyond that, the band, there are bands to it. The first level, you pay 7%, the next one, 9%, you go on and on like that. So a maximum of, if you earn over 3.2 in a year, you pay about 25% on that, over and above that. And so it has taken care of the bigger the head, the more taxes you will pay. That will take care of the fear that you have in that area. So if you don't make so much profit, then you don't pay too much of taxes. Um, the first question that was asked was, like, we have an avalanche of um, taxes to be collected by local government by... Um, a startup entrepreneur, and um, how do you get to know which one is real, which one is not real? The examples you gave, all of them, coincidentally, they are real taxes. TV, radio, and um, which other one did you talk about? Parking, you know, they are all real. Now, what Lagos State Government has done, such that people are not cheated, and even when you are aggrieved, or you need to ventilate an idea about something that is wrong with your taxation system or administration. The Lagos State Government has set up a place called Revenue Complaints Commission. That Revenue Complaints Commission is in Block 19 at um, Lagos State Secretariat under the Office of the Special Advisor Taxation and Revenue. You will go there and you will complain about what you are not clear about. If anybody comes to uh, place any tax obligation on you, from the local government or the state government. As an individual, I mean, you have no tax obligation towards the gov federal government. Your obligation will start if you are a corporate entity. As a federal, uh, as a corporate, a limited liability company, that's when you pay your company income tax to the federal government. Now, talking about the individual taxes, personal income tax, and some of the local government levies, if you are not clear about what you need to do, come to that office. There is something we call the approved list of collections for local government. It's a public publication. Every, every one is entitled to a copy of it. If you want it, I can make it available through Mrs. Awoshika to each and every one of you. But it's a public document that if you go on the website of Lagos State um, Office of uh, Taxation, Special Advisor Taxation and Revenue, you will get it on the website. Can you give us about, the, web, the website that they need to get? Yes, it's the Lagos State Government website, WW Lagos State. Then there is a portal there where you will see MDAs, Ministries, Departments and Agencies. Just click on the Office of the Special Advisor portal. Then you, you will see everything that you need to download about the um, Revenue Complaints Commission on that site. Now, there are about 15 items there that the local governments are entitled to collect, part of which is the shop and kiosk permit, part of which is the parking permit, 
part of which is the TV and radio, whatever. Now, what you could be quarreling with is that what they have come to charge you, is it what they should be charging? Yet, when you lay your hand on that document, the document classifies um, areas into about four. The A+, plus, the A, the B, and the C, depending on where you are. Um, high urban, urban, mi um, mid areas, and um, the last one, um, rural. That's the way it classified it. I was trying to look for a better word, but in the, in the, in the classification is rural. So it will tell you what amount you are supposed to pay. Anything over and above that, if you get the assessment, you can take it down to the Revenue Complaints Commission in the address I've just told you, and they will um, intervene in the matter and call the local government to order. Now, let, let's, let's make some things clear. All the information, see, two of the questions, it's not the taxman's problem. That's how, because of all the different taxes, how will you make profit? If you remember some of the things we've said, it's your responsibility to get all the information that relates to your own business. You must understand that for the business that you want to do and the location where you will be, these are all the taxes or the charges or levies that you are required to pay. Do you understand? By doing your homework in advance and having all that information, you will add it to your cost base. And it would then be accommodated in your pricing. The reason you will have a problem with being profitable because of levies and taxes is because at the time that you were calculating your price, you, you took out some Yes, of you, your... you lost sight of some costs. And part of the cost will be some of those taxes. What it also does as well is, when you, you remember when we're talking about the business plan, if you lose sight of some charges, you will think that the business is viable once you've sold 30 pieces. But meanwhile, to capture all the costs will let you know that your break-even point for that business is 50. If you are not able to, on a sustainable manner, sell at least 50 of the product, that location or that shop or that store is not ideal for what you want to do. Yeah. That's why you will find some people will never, they won't build factories in Victoria Island mm -hmm. or in Ikoyi or in Surulere. Not even in some parts of Ikeja. That's why you see some people go very far to low-cost areas because they already know that for the kind of thing they want to produce and the acceptable cost base in the market, certain locations don't work. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So the levies, the taxes and all that, that's not the real problem for your business. Now, you have a responsibility to make sure you have all the information. Once you have the correct information, somebody comes to you to say, you are going to pay tax for, I don't know, cattle. And you already know that on the list of taxes that relate to your own business, you have no business paying for cattle. You can stand up like Mr. Talabi said and be bold. Why? You already have the right information. Half the time they take advantage of you because you don't know. You're not sure. So when they say to you, no, you're required to pay it, you're a bit confused, but they're standing as authority, so you fall because you do not know. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yes. get the right information. Have it all in the process of preparing for the business and it protects you from that situation that you raised. Ignite from dreams to reality. When searching for a good bank, you have to be very discerning so you don't get one thing and miss out on others. Well, your search is over at First Bank. We offer a variety of products and services made with you in mind. From flexible loans, Easy access to cash, bill payments from anywhere in the world, to savings for the little ones. Make that switch today. Contact us to learn more about the many products and services we have designed for your convenience. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. For you to do business successfully, you need to give what you're supposed to give to the government for further development. I pay my tax. Yes, I pay my tax. Yes, I pay my tax. 
I pay my tax. Yes, I pay my tax. Ignite from dreams to reality. Let's set up questions. Based on um, the interview with Mr. Folonsho, I went to the tax office to make inquiries about um, tax identification number and VAT registration. I just need to confirm. I asked for um, the list of requirements. I was told what was required, and I was asked to, in quote, have about 20,000 Naira. Is this a legal charge? What did they tell you the 20,000 yes. is for? She said for the tax identification number and the VAT registration, and I think I found it kind of funny, but I just no, want to confirm. No, it really is funny. I mean, for a startup that wants to register and have a team, a, a um, tax identification number, all you need to bring are your business uh, registration requirements, number of people that will be in employment and things like that, and then your projections, they will register you. Then on a monthly basis, your role to us is as a collection, a collection agent. Agents, they explain you, that you, you will deduct from all your employees on a monthly basis, bring it to us, and each of them will have personal identification number that is called a thing, which is their tax identification number allocated to them. So all their payments will be going into that. At the end of the year, when they want to collect their tax clearance certificate, which is electronic in now, it's a small card, not hard copy anymore. It's that document they will speak to, and then they will see how much they have paid in a year. All that information will be downloaded, and then a, a tax certificate will be given to them. If you are asked to bring 20,000, I will need to ask what it is for. So, guys, out. if you go and do your team number or your whatever number, and anybody says you need to pay 20,000, fa, fa, fa. Fa. No. So don't pay anybody no. to register for don't that. Don't pay. Okay. I really want to ask about pricing home tax. Actually, where, in a situation where you are really taxing yourself, you're, you're paying your tax to the government, and your peers, or let me say your competitors in the market, are not paying tax. Now, you have a readily available mark, I mean, amount of price in the market. When you pay your price, I mean, when you pay your tax, it affects your own pricing. And probably your own price goes up and higher than the people who are not paying tax, who are able to sell at a particular amount of money, and you cannot meet up with that. How do we factor that in, man? Thank you. I don't think that's Mr. Shedukov's problem. <laughs> We've already talked about values, and we said our values are a personal choice and is a reflection of our character. You make the choice to do the right thing, not because other people are doing it or because they're not. You accept the responsibility of your decision you might make, it might look to you like you're making a smaller margin than they are, but over time, the peace of mind that you have and knowing that you have done the right thing, you will find out that you'll probably be in business longer than they will. Yes. Because the day that enforcement comes from tax office exactly. or anywhere else, they are already used to doing the wrong thing. They will not be able to cope. You are used to making smaller margin and pushing for volume. And because you want your business to be profitable, once you know you, you, you have more costs because of the, the things you do right, and in order to be competitive, you have smaller margin, you will become better at other, because you are naturally inspired to want to find other ways to make your business more profitable. Sometimes it involves you being better at your cost. You might be paying taxes and not necessarily have a higher cost than them, because other areas of your business process you might be work more at saving. Yes, you, you would strive to have better efficiency so you can reduce your cost. And what I'm telling you is real life. Yeah. So you don't decide to do what is right because other people are not doing it or because they're doing it. It's because you know it's the right thing to do. And as a person, you set your own value system from the onset. All right? Well, Next and in addition to that, you know, let me say to you that in Lagos State, that's the real position the basis, but I'm going to talk empirically to you. In Lagos State as of today, those people that are, are either evading or avoiding the tax, they only do it for a, 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 a very, not even a long season anymore. 
The system that we have in place is self-checking as of today. And once we go through it one year, the trend analysis shows something funny, or you are not captured in one particular year, the law empowers us to go six years backward. A lot of them are groaning now. They have debts. Some have come to say, okay, we don't want to go to court, or we are in court, we want to do out of court settlement. They have repayment plans. They just postpone the evils there on themselves. You know, so the best thing is that ab initio, just decide that you will know what to do, what the right thing to do, and you are doing it. Like she said, that gives you the peace of mind, and you, the tendency that you will endure and you will stay long in that business will be there. So don't be, and in any case, whatever they are saving temporarily, most times they don't pass it on to the consumers. They take it on. So that they will be better with the consumers with you compared to you, in not most likely. cases, is not likely. They do it to cheat for themselves, not to cheat for the consumers. So please, you need to continue to hold your values very high and don't look at that side. There was a time I considered moving closer to my village because Where? of the house rent my in village. Lagos. Okay. Because of house rent in Lagos. Maybe more way up for area. But I do business in Lagos. That's a good state. There was this argument in the hype, media hype about where do you remit your task? Is it where you stay or where you work? That's one. Another one is my mother has a shop and she paid to the local government. I'm the one that remit that levy for her. But there is this thing I've always seen in the, uh, the list. Radio and television tasks. Tasks is supposed to be on what you generate. How does television that I have bought my money? Now we'll be, I'll be paying for the, paying for electricity, paying tasks on top radio, television. I have a camera, I have a laptop, I'm a photographer. I don't pay tasks on my laptop, which is more expensive sometimes than my television, or the camera that they use here. How come am I going to still pay tasks on radio and television? That area is not very clear to me. As an agent of the government, please, can you explain to me? Okay. The first question you asked is about the residency rule. You, you live in Nogun, you work in Lagos. Okay, so where should you remit your tax? The law is very clear on it, as of today. The law... Section 32 of uh, Personal Income Tax Act, as amended even as at 2011, still retains that clause. You will pay your tax where you reside, the residency room, irrespective of where you work. Place of abode is the state, the tax authority, the relevant tax authority is the tax authority over and above your place of residence. For example, if you work in Lagos and you live in Ogun, you will remit your tax to Ogun State. Now, that's the position of the law. Operationally, op operationally that's what it's supposed to be. Again, we are, there is other, another argument that is going on, economic residence. Economic residence means if I live in Mowe, um, whatever, and then I walk in Lagos, I leave the place 5.30, 6 a.m., I don't get back there 9 p.m., can you say really that that's where I reside? But again, that's still an argument going on. Clearly, today, the law... The position of the law, section 32 of Peter, and Peter has amended, is that you pay your tax where you reside. Well, how, for, for businesses, uh, that's a big challenge operationally because if you work in Lagos, your employer will deduct payee from your salary. Yes. And your employer will tend to just send the payee for the entire workforce well, that, to the state where the business that is. That is so. the, the, the true. Operationally, that's what subsists. But that the challenge is that it's for the employer to know the residence of each of their employees and then sort it out. That's, that's what the law says. I know operationally it's challenging. And that's why some states are clamoring for the fact that please take out all our residents and send their taxes to us until that law is changed. I don't know want to come, you know, this is not a political forum. So I want to stick with the law. You know, that's the position of the law. But if you ask me for my personal view, I think the argument to push that more is the economic residence argument. Okay. We'll stay with the law right now. Okay. Whenever the economic argument is won, then we'll we follow. will come back to it. But the real challenge is with the employers. Employer. Of people because most companies have not bothered to get involved. Yes, to so sort it out address yes. by address. Yes. Um, your second question is about the TV and radio. Um, whatever, that you don't pay on laptop, the law is the law. Even if the law says 
before you come into this studio, you have to jump three times. Once it has been passed as a law, it has become a law. Your challenge to that law is before it is passed. That what is the sense in it? What's the logic? What's the propriety of this law? That before I can come into the studio, I, can, I must jump three times. The only time you can challenge that is before it is passed as a law. The law as of as today is that there are about 15 items that the local government are entitled to. Levy is not a tax. It's a levy, it's a charge. It's different from a tax. TV um, and radio licenses, once you have them, you will pay a fee on them. And it is also categorized depending on where they are. If it's on category A+, plus, which is uh, the Lekis of this world, the Ecoys of this world, of the, this world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they know how much they will pay. But if it is our own area, Moshi, Ajam Gwadi, you know. Don't let him deceive you. <laughs> then we know how much we will also pay from there. Um, so that's how it is. It's still the law as of today. Um, and of course, you must understand what taxes are for. It's a commonwealth. You know, the, the, I think before we take the next question, the next batch of questions, you will give me one minute to talk about why taxation at all. So if you have an understanding of it, then you won't be fighting it the way you are because it's for the good of everyone. Ignite from dreams to reality. When searching for a good bank, you have to be very discerning. So you don't get one thing and miss out on others. Well, your search is over at First Bank. We offer a variety of products and services made with you in mind. From flexible loans, easy access to cash, bill payments from anywhere in the world, to savings for the little ones. Make that switch today. Contact us to learn more about the many products and services we have designed for your convenience. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. I want to believe that if I'm earning an income, if I'm a government and I'm working for government and I have a regular income, I want to believe that my tax rates will be regular. Then what happens when your work causes the um, tax on an income to be irregular every month? Please, I wanted to enlighten us more on um, this land use charge on tenement rate because. Um, like two months, um, a month ago, uh, they came to my house with one letter and they brought, they said I'm going to pay over 167,000 naira for land use. I'm just wondering what. Okay. When you, you are an employee earning the same income and month in, month out, your taxes vary. I, it can vary. The margin of variation will be very minimal depending on what allowances were paid. Like I said to you, the taxes are fixated by rates. What changes is the denominator. The, the, what changes is your high, the income. If it changes, depending on what allowances was added this month, which did you collect leave allowance, if you didn't collect last month or something, it will change marginally. But the, the variation will be very minimal, very, very minimal. It's, it's not, I mean, it's by percentage. And once, and again, if, one particular month, you cross over to another band because taxations are banded. You know, maybe they will now say to you, the first 300,000, you pay 7%. The next 300,000, you pay 9%. If you cross to that next band, that particular month, it will change. And employers have a way of paying to employees. Some months, there yeah, you go on the flat rate. Some particular months, they say, we're paying quarterly, we're paying quarterly residential allowance to these people, we are doing this. When that happens, taxation will change at that particular point in time. I go back to the issue of a land use charge and tenement rate. Now, what is tenement rate? What is land use charge? Tenement rate are rates that the local government will charge every property located within their vicinity or jurisdiction in a particular year for services that they render for that particular jurisdiction. Now, what Lagos State found out at a point in time was that one mode of collection was not very transparent. Basis of computation or assessment was not transparent. And then, of course, when you collect one particular this year in a particular way, they come back the following year and they say, oh no, they have reviewed this, this is this, this. So it was becoming cantankerous in the system for the state. And the state has the responsibility to keep law and order, okay? So what the state did was to say, okay, 
if this be so, let's harmonize for all the local governments. Because there was no standardization. Somebody living in Shomolu local government could say, okay, I paid 10,000. The next person living in, in, in Mushi could say, they charged me 20,000. What happened? The gospel says, this will not happen. Okay, everything that has to do with property, land and ground, let's put them together, consolidate them, and let there be just one collection point for the entire state. Who will collect on behalf of all the local governments and the LCDAs in Lagos State, 57 of them. Okay, so now we now consolidated the tenement rate, the ground rent, and the neighborhood improvement charge and land use law rate into the land use charge, the four items together. And we say this will be collected by this agency on behalf of all these local governments in Lagos State. And all the local governments in Lagos State endorsed that approval of it, and a law was enacted to back it up. Now, once you have started paying land use charge, um, tenement rates cannot be collected again from you. Neighborhood improvement rate cannot be collected from you. Ground rent cannot be collected from you because they have been consolidated into that one single charge I call the land use charge. However, before you are enumerated, assessed, and you start paying on land use charge, if you have not done that, then you will continue to pay the tenement rates to the local government pending when the land use charge gets to you. Because we can also, because we are enacting a new law, a new system, some people will now escape um, taxation or charges or levies in a particular year. No. So land use charge has come to replace all those four um, um, levies that I just spoke about. So they don't go together. It is either in the particular year you have paid a tenement rate and you not pay land use charge, or you pay land use charge, you don't pay tenement rate. But that was for the transition. And I think right now, land use charge has covered over 80, in fact, close to 90% of the states. Very few places you will find people still paying tenement rates. Okay, so be sure that nobody is charging you any of those components that are part of the Land Use Act bill. Only one bill. But where you have not been charged that, then you can still pay the other one. And never have the two. Yes. Or the four and the Land Use Act at the same time. That's very vital information. You know, for the guy who was asking about the radio and the TV, even in the UK, because you know, there are many things that they tell us to do and we think, mm, Nigerian factor. Mm. Believe me. How much is radio or TV charging in Lagos? About 10,000, 5,000, uh, depending uh, on the About 10,000, 5,000. In the UK, it has nothing to do with area. It's a flat charge of 149,000, uh, 149 pounds. Even students pay it. Yeah, as long as you have TV and radio, you will pay. It's 149 pounds. Yeah. You will pay 149 pounds a year. That's, the, you have a choice. Don't buy TV. Watch everything you watch on TV on your laptop because nobody's charging you for it. Listen, use your iPod or whatever to listen to music and for the radio then you will not pay radio charge. Sorry, man. Yes. Uh, but we have to No, that's start. the truth. For every problem, there's a solution, as long as it's legal. Remember? As yeah, long as, as it's legal. legal. So the TV thing is not just a Nigerian thing. Other countries do it as well. But like I said, you can watch everything you watch on TV, on your laptop, and there's no charge for it. Yeah. Okay. We'll take the next three questions. Um, in a situation whereby you have a, a company and you have subsidiaries, do you need to get a tax identification number on each of those companies? And um, in a company, sometimes uh, it's a limited liability company, but the state government sometimes comes there to take tax. So what uh, kind of tax is that? that uh, you have a group of companies and um, subsidiaries and um, you want to know should you register the subsidiaries individually and then the group on its own. It's, it's a function of your accounting system. You know, if all those companies are not standalone, they all report back to the group and 
the, the, the payment system is from the group, then the group will take care of them. But if those companies are standalone on their own, they have their P&L, they record their profit and loss on their own, they pay staff on their own, they do everything on their own. Uh, yes, limited liability companies on their own, they must have their own team. They must have their own tax identification numbers. They will be treated as an individual entity. It's for your convenience or the ownership that we know that they are part and parcel of the owner's um, properties. Okay? Ignite from dreams to reality. When searching for a good bank, you have to be very discerning. So you don't get one thing and miss out on others. Well, your search is over at First Bank. We offer a variety of products and services made with you in mind. From flexible loans, easy access to cash, bill payments from anywhere in the world, to savings for the little ones. Make that switch today. Contact us to learn more about the many products and services we have designed for your convenience. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. Sir, I want to say... I am five years in business, and for once, I never paid tax. I want to say that this is because I think I see no government presence where I do my business. Nobody comes to ask me or tell me you need to pay tax. So, sincerely, in business, I never knew I need to pay tax. Mm -hmm. So, I want to say that are there enforcement bodies going after people to tell them, do this, do that? And is there any orientation process or program to tell people you need to pay tax, even if you are doing business. That is one. The question to you is, I, I run a long-term business. If you are into a long-term business, is it that when you run a long-term thing, are you charged after you make sales or after you are done with your, um, you dispose your goods and you make your money that you go back to pay your tax or you pay on a monthly basis? My question is, when you came in, the first thing that comes to my mind is, how do I pay tax? Now, I'm into business. What I do is I go buy things like nowhere, jewelries, and all that, and I sell to people. Now, I'm not paying any tax. Do I have to pay tax? And if I have to, how? Now, I want to ask if I, I have learned that until I have a business. Now, when I start, how do I start paying tax? That's my question. My question is, on the issue of the radio and television charge, in an organization or a shop within the local government that does not have a, a radio nor a TV, and the local government official actually brought their all this, all the, um, this notice for payment of radio and television charge, and the person refused to pay because he doesn't have a, a TV nor a radio. If the, clause, the, the shop is locked, what can you do? That is number one. The second one is, LIRS, the, in the legal state, internal revenue. Internal service. Yeah. They have this habit of tax assessments or audits. They will send you a letter that they are coming for an audit and they will not come. Within two or three months later, they will bring you a letter um, telling you that you are charged for so 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 based on assessment. And most times, they will give you penalty of 20% and 25% for no payment, all those penalties. When you now check into their assessments, the makeup, you find out that most of the figures there is even higher than what you are actually making. And they will still want you to come and pay, telling you that if you do not come in 30 days, you will be charged. What can we do to that? Another question, sir. Please. Sir, is there anything like Car radio charge. Okay. Um, I hope I won't be lost along the line. Um, in Lagos State, of, as of today, someone will say he's not aware that he should be paying tax. Not Lagos. Oh, okay. Because the awareness level in Lagos, I will speak about Lagos. I know so much about Lagos. The awareness level in Lagos is very high about tax. And Lagos does not go with just the principle of Civil, um, civic responsibility, a social contract that once you are brought in the government, then you have to pay taxes. Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. But as far as we are concerned, we operate from the benef benefit principles. The benefit principles behind taxation as distinct from the social contract. Advanced countries, it's taken for granted. Once you put in a government, 
you must know you must empower that government to perform by paying your tax. If you don't, you go to jail. In some countries like the U.S., one of the weapons they use to fight politicians there is taxation. Very few of them will escape it when they do the back, back tax audit for them. But here in Lagos, we believe in the benefit principles. In other words, when you pay your tax, you put it in a common pot. We want you to see where your tax money is being used so that it will encourage you to pay more. If that is not enough, as an awareness program, we have also sent out minimum of over 800 people on a daily basis advocating, talking about taxation to people, why they should pay it, the need for it, because it's going to be beneficial to them in the long run, in providing social services and amenities to them. And you have, if you haven't been paying it, I will then join you to pay it. It's, it should be part of your values. Some of the things you should put in as a critical value for your organization. They don't bring auditors. Uh, they say auditors are coming. They don't come with the auditor, and suddenly they throw you BOJ. Look, like I said, in every system, there can be exemptions to the rules. If they say they are coming with um, tax auditors to come and audit you, you haven't seen them, two things could happen. It's also your civic responsibility to say, look, I got this letter from you. I'm prepared for you. You haven't come. What is happening? Put it on record. I have a copy of the letter. Let them acknowledge the receipt. When they come back and say you are doing BOJ, because the report they will bring back is that they have been there a couple of times. Don't forget that most of the tax auditors are tax consultants to the LIRS, they don't work and they the don't state. come in there, and they come back and say, we've been there. The people are not cooperating with us. They haven't given us any books to look into and things like that. So we think we should do BOJ on them. If nothing comes from you as an objection to that, then the tax authorities will hold that. So the onus is on you to say, look, I have received this letter from one of your agents. They said they will be coming. It's now three weeks. I have not seen them. Please know that I'm ready for them. And if they come with a report of any best of judgment assessment, please reject it. You will file that. So whenever they come, because again, when tax auditors come to you, or even if they do BOJ on you, the law empowers you to, uh, to challenge you, to object within a specified period, within 30 days of receiving that. You can still go back to the tax and say, no, this cannot be it. So if the law empowers you to that, the law more than empowers you to say, look, if you have not come to audit me and I'm ready for the audit, you cannot arrive at any BOJ. Part of why some of them, because you know, for every system, they're the good guys and they're the bad guys. Part of why some of them are quick to do best of judgment. So when they give you that bill, that doesn't make sense. For people that don't know the right and don't realize they can challenge, then they can tell you that let's negotiate. And the process of negotiation is the process of compromise. Now, you see, this thing we're talking about, getting things right and our value system, we all must be the protectors of the system. Because when that happens and you do what Mr. Shodiko has said, then you protect yourself and you prevent them from being able to actualize that. Because you've written a letter saying, and if they come at a time that is not convenient for me, you also have the right to say, we're unable, we're not available yes. at this time. And give but, them another option. And give option. them another time. Exactly. You, you have a right to also say, sorry, for these reasons, we're not available at this time. We will be ready for you at this certain time. Because you must have your own people around when they have come to audit you so that you can be sure that they're doing the right thing. Okay, guys, at this point, we're not going to take any more questions because I think we've covered a lot of the critical things. I'm just going to ask Mr. Shodipo to give us key words of advice where our taxation and the state is concerned. The things we must not forget to look out for, the things that are key, that are important, and that will help our businesses to be right before the law, but also facilitate our businesses grow, growing. Yes, sir. Okay, well, the, the first thing I would like to say is that as entrepreneurs that are basing their operations on values and ethics that are acceptable worldwide, talking about corporate governance, the moment you set up to say you want to go into a business, aside from the fact that it is a law and it's a civic responsibility on your part, it is important that you know that you will always go to the state's government to first let them know that I have started this business. 
this is what I plan to do. This is how I plan to do it. And these are my projections. But as the actual crystallizes, I'll be coming to you either on quarterly or biannual or annual basis to let you have my figures and then I can be charged appropriately. Now, when you do that, you stand right with the government at all times on your own. That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is that there is the tendency when you start employing people and you have sorry. more than five... And you do that, sorry to interject. And you do what he's, he said first by going for those registrations. Yes. Without the 20,000. Yes. Without the 20,000. Registering your business for the VAT number, the tax uh, team, team number. Yes, team number. Yes. Having all of those is registering your business that... I'm ready to do business, and these are my tax identification. Doesn't mean any taxes do no, yet, no. but it just means you've done the right thing because now you're on record. And when the taxes are due, you then make the payment. Yes, sir. Now, the second thing you need to do internally, you must make sure, even if you cannot afford a proper accountant, you have somebody who is very vast in bookkeeping because it's important at the end of the day such that you and the tax officer, you are not fighting or negotiating on unnecessary things. They are avoidable issues. Once you have the records, it's the record that they should be speaking to, not you. The moment they start talking to you, okay. you're bringing in negotiation, compromise, and a lot of other things that will not bother on good corporate governance or transparency. So please have somebody, and if you don't have, ensure that you have a way of recording all your transactions properly so that your profit at every point in time can be determined or your personal income if you are the sole proprietor and you're the only one doing it can be determined um, um, I, I, I think by the time you do those two if you have employees and there are more than five you know that you will become the agent of the state in terms of a deduction of taxes from them and remitting same on monthly basis to the relevant tax authority. In this case, when they live in Lagos, they work in Lagos, to the Lagos State Tax Authority. Um, so that's very important, because if you don't do that, then um, you, 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 you are exposing yourself to distrain, you are exposing yourself to prosecution, and you are exposing your business to um, sudden truncation or um, extinction from the um, system. So I, I think by the time you do all this, you'll be fine. So if you don't have up to five workers, what do you do? Well, you still have to charge them. For economies of scales, you know, they, 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 the individuals will have to go and be paying on their own. But you, you are will not, not be the agent. Yes, you still have to charge them. Yeah. They have to pay. But you will become the agent because of economies of scale. You can't be reporting one or two, three people. You know, but once you have a minimum of five, then you become a collecting agent as an employer. Ignite from dreams to reality. So remember this. If you don't have up to five workers yet, you are not responsible for the payee tax of your workers. As you will file your personal tax, the only thing you can do is to encourage your own workers to go ahead and go and file for their tax. Nobody is coming to ask you why your workers have not paid taxes. But once you have up to five, you become that unpaid agent that Mr. Folorusho explained to us, which is a civic responsibility yeah. and you're also legally accountable for. You become the unpaid agent of government for collecting payee, for deducting withholding tax, and for remitting same back to the government. Remember, five is the magic number. If you have up to four, it's not your business, but encourage your people to. If you have up to five, you become liable. And if those taxes are not paid by your workers, your company will still be charged. Yeah. So you've got to deduct it. Because I, I know a few companies who are going through that process now. When you go back to your workers to now say, I've got to take all the taxes we didn't deduct from you before, they will fight you. Because yeah. it's your responsibility and you, you didn't carry it out. Most times you find the company then becoming responsible for paying those taxes. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Shudipo. You're welcome. We've learned a lot from you, you. and we're very grateful. Thank you. Send in your comments, questions, and shout-outs to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ignatv.
Twitter slash Ignite TV NG and check out our website www.ignite-tv.com For extras on Ignite, visit our YouTube account on www.youtube.com slash Ignite TV Nigeria For lots more about the show and lots of useful information on building your business.